McCann, teaching artist with the Crestwood Wise and Well program, here from outside my home studio to do part two of a mosaic stepping stone workshop. Things you'll need for this workshop are your mosaic design that we did in the first video. Um, you'll, of course, need your stepping stone, so grab that. Um, I use a MyPay Carabond tile mortar. You can get this if you're in the Baltimore area um, at Fishman and Sons. Um, if you're not, just get any kind of outdoor tile mortar um, from your local hardware store. I also use this acrylic admixture. Again, I use the MyPay Hair Elastic. Um, again, you can get that at all Fishman Sons or just get whatever brand they've got at your local hardware store. You'll need some sanded grout, um, and grout comes in different colors. I'm going to do mine gray so it matches my uh, paper. Pick whatever color you like. Um, you'll need a couple different trowels, a little one to scoop, um, this one with the sharp edge, and one with the rubber bottom. If you want to keep your space neat, you'll want some plastic and scissors and tape to cover your table. This is my work table, so I'm not going to bother with that. Um, you're going to need a bucket. You're going to want some sort of face mask so you don't breathe in the powder from the uh, tile mortar and the grout. You're going to need a source of water. Got some in a pitcher. If you got a hose, that'll work too. You're going to want some rags and or sponges. I prefer rags. If you like a sponge, that's fine. A toothbrush or some Q-tips um, just to get that extra grout out of there. And then we'll get started. So to get started, you're going to want to um, measure out some of your tile mortar into your bucket. And you can do this um, by following the instructions on the package. Um, if you've done this before and you know how much you want to mix, um, feel free to just measure it out by eye. I am going to put my mask on though because you do not want to breathe in this powder as you scoop it into the bucket. So just make sure you've got some sort of face covering on. So when you add um, your acrylic admix to your mortar, you want to put the wet into the dry and you want to do so slowly because if you put too much liquid in, you can't take it out and you really don't want to add more powder at the end of it. Um, so I am going to put my face mask back on. While I do this, you're really looking to mix um, your mortar up into the consistency of like sour cream. Um, and just remember that you just need to keep mixing as you go and to scrape the bottoms. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in just a sec. So if you've got um, a drill with a mixer um, attachment, you can use one of those. Since we're just doing a little bit for this one stepping stone today, I'm just going to mix it with my hand. And read the package direction. There's usually um, a time you want to mix for. This one's three minutes. And so just follow the instructions and keep mixing. Put my timer on. And remember, you really want to make sure you're getting it off the bottom and off the sides because you don't want to leave any powder in there. And you do want to do this outside when you can because it does have a smell to it. 
and if you're doing it inside, make sure it's in a well-ventilated area. You'll start to see it starting to get the consistency that we want. We just keep mixing. The drill does make it easier on your arms. thing to remember when you're doing this if you're going to use your stepping stones outside just make sure you get mortar that's good for outside um, it should say on the bag um, whether it's for exterior or interior you see again there it is and that is just about three minutes so now we're ready to put it on our stone um, so what I like to tell people that putting the mortar onto your um, stepping stone is just like making a peanut butter sandwich. You want to make sure you put enough peanut butter on, but not too much. Um, so you're really just going to use your trowel and start spreading a thin layer. You want it to be about a quarter of an inch on your whole paper. If it's got a little bit of a beveled edge here, you want to make sure you get some mortar on there too, or you want to make sure that you make your design a little bit smaller so it won't hang over that edge. It has been a minute, so I can't quite remember how I made mine exactly, so I'm going to cover that edge just in case. I find if you get a bunch on it and you can just scrape it on the edge and then you can spread it. you want this to be even since we use glass you want to make sure it is not too thick so kind of go through and just make sure you don't have any really thick or really thin areas and then we're ready for the next part so for this part you're going to need the trowel that's um, got the V notches in it and you're going to hold this at a 45 degree angle I'll see if I can get you a good angle on it so 45 degree angle and you're just going to put straight across in one go your stone. And you'll see then that these a pattern in the um, mortar. And the reason this is important is because there's so much glass um, and it's so thin, you want to have less so it doesn't squeeze up in between your pieces of glass. So if you turn it over, so one more piece to do. And so you just kind of want to line it up as best that you can. 45 degree angle and pull it straight across and you'll see you'll pull all that extra off and then the great thing we did is since we laid out our design on cardboard uh, so can angle the camera so you can see it is that you want to lay out the cardboard you got your stepping stone and you're just gonna put it right on top like a sandwich so Line it up, and there you go. So I have taped my cardboard, so I'm going to just untape this on the back.
and then you'll be able to see um, where your design and you do just want to go and just press in each piece of glass and make sure it's all stuck um, you do not have to take your contact paper off right now you can wait till it dries if you do want to take it off you do want to be careful and just pull it one piece at a time and make sure all those pieces are stuck the reason I would pull the contact paper off is if you have gotten if you see that your mortar is squeezing up between your glass pieces and it looks like mine is a pretty good thing so there's not really any of that happening um, but if there is you definitely want to pull it off and you'll see you'll have to push down each piece of glass as you go and clean out any places where the mortar has um, has bubbled up between the glass pieces if it's not and you think it looks pretty good oh actually I do have a spot right in the middle so we're gonna peel this off um, and I'll show you what to do if you've got a little bit of mortar between your pieces but you're gonna have to peel it off very carefully and very slowly now since this mortar is white if you're using white grout doesn't even matter you can just leave that extra mortar in between but I'm gonna be using gray mortar so I want to make sure that my stepping stone doesn't have a white spot in the middle. Um, so I'm going to finish peeling this off. And then also you'll see as you go if any of those pieces are over the side of the bevel you can either stick them back on or pull them off. It's up to you. And again if your mortar looks good leave the contact paper on and just let it dry. Okay, so last thing to do today is just if you've got any mortar kind of pushing up between your glass pieces, grab a toothbrush or a Q-tip and just clear some of that out. You don't have to clear a whole, all of it out, you just have to clear enough so that the mortar is not up over the edge of the glass. Um, and the reason for that is the next step, which will grout it, um, that'll fill in all those holes. So if your grout is a different color than your mortar, you want to make sure you're not going to have a space. Um, that'll be the white of the mortar. Um, so from here, you got to let this dry 24 to 48 hours, and then we'll be back to show you the last step, which is the grout. So after you mortar all your glass pieces to your stepping stone, uh, you want to let that sit for 48 hours, which I've done with mine here, um, and then we're going to get the grout on. It's the last piece of this process, and then your mosaic stepping stone, once it's fully dry, is ready to go in the garden or wherever you're going to put it. Um, so we are going to measure out some grout here. Remember, there's different color grout you can get. We're going to use DeLorean Gray today. Um, so you're going to need a bucket, a trowel, as well as the rubber trowel, a bunch of rags, and I prefer to use gloves when I'm using grout because the grout does um, dry out your hands, so you might want to grab some gloves as well. Um, so I'm going to get this mask on, measure out my grout, and then I'll be back give you some more directions. Remember the dust mask is really important when you're measuring out both the grout and the mortar so you don't breathe in um, the dust particles. So I measured out about five scoops. You can also follow the measuring directions on the package. Um, that works too. And we're going to just use some water to mix that up. I am going to put my gloves on now um, and keep my mask on for when I'm mixing the grout just until it's wet. That way I can make sure I don't breathe any of the grout in.
So you see, like I mixed the mortar, you want to pour a small amount of water in first. Um, mix it up, then a little bit more, um, just to make sure that you don't put too much water in because you can't take it out. Um, and then you want your grout to be about the consistency of sour cream. Um, so you'll see, it's, you can see it's just about the consistency of like a thick sour cream, and so that is perfect. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to put it onto our stepping stone. I'm going to angle the camera so you can see what I'm doing. You will need your um, rubber float trowel if you have one. So grab that um, and a bunch of rags. Some mosaic artists also use sponges. If you like sponges better, you can use those. I prefer the rags. Um, so let's get this started. So to start applying the grout, I usually just kind of put a couple dabs of it on the mosaic. Um, you can kind of use your fingers to start to spread it around just to see if you've got enough. You can also use your um, trowel with the rubber on the bottom to just kind of pull it across. What you're looking to do is fill in all those crevices in between the pieces of glass with grout. Um, be careful, the edges of the glass will be sharp, so it's easier to use the trowel so you don't cut your fingers on them. Keep some band-aids on hand if you need them and make sure as you get to the edge that you're really kind of making it neat so that you get a nice neat edge there. So you just keep spreading. If you need a little bit more, drop a little bit more on there. So I do tend to use my hand as well as the tool, especially on the edge where I'm trying to make it neat. And you just keep spreading until everything is covered. So this is another really important moment of why you want to cover your working surface. In plastic, it is a lot easier to kind of make a mess and then just be able to fold up the plastic to clean up. Um, so once you're fully covered and you know you've got grout in between all the pieces because it's all over the whole thing, that's when you can just grab a rag and you just really start to wipe the excess grout off. So as you go, just kind of taking off all the extra from the top, you're making sure you're leaving all the grout in between the pieces though. And as you're going, if you see any places where there's not enough, you can kind of fill it back in. And so as the grout dries, it'll get a little bit easier to do this. This kind of first go will take off a lot of the extra, and then you'll just kind of keep wiping and polishing. And when you get most of it off, let it sit for about five minutes. And so we'll do that, and then come back and give it one final polish, and then you're done. So once you're ready, um, and you've gotten most of that excess grout off when you've let your stepping stone sit for about five minutes, take a clean rag and just do one final polish. And that's going to get any of that film of the grout off. And then you are all set to let this, it'll fully dry in about 24 hours. And then you're ready to put it in your garden. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, again, I'm Sarah McCann from the Keswick Wise and Well Center making mosaic stepping stones. And I'll see you next time.